season by season, I watch him amazed in all of the mystery of his perfect ways. All I have need of, his hand will provide. He's always. on the past year, a year that's been difficult in so many ways. And yet we begin our morning with those great, wonderful, reassuring words that God has always been faithful to us. This morning I begin a, a brief series through the month of January, looking back at the past year. A series I'm calling Hindsight is 2020. And I'd just like to reflect on some things that I've been thinking about as I think back to this crazy year in the past 10 months where we have not been able to gather here in our church facility. It's been a difficult year. It's been a difficult week for many people. And yet we come to worship this morning to remind ourselves of the faithfulness and the presence of our God Isaiah 43, verses 16 to 19 says, This is what the Lord says. The Lord who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and the horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there, never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. This is what that Lord says. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. For see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way, a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The message paraphrase says, forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present. I am about to do something brand new. Well, 2021 is brand new, and we look with anticipation as to what God will do in us, for us, through us. God is always making things beautiful 
out of things that are ugly, out of pain, out of discouragement, out of hopelessness. God is always making things new and beautiful out of us. So join with me as I don't dwell on the past, but I think back to this last year in order that we might look forward for what God has in store for you and for me. Amen. Chapter 33, verses 12 through 17. Moses said to God, Look, you tell me, lead this people, but you don't let me know whom you're going to send with me. You tell me, I know you well, and you are special to me. If I'm so special to you, let me in on your plans. That way I will continue being special to you. Don't forget, this is your people, your responsibility. God said, My presence will go with you. I'll see the journey to the end. 
Moses said, If your presence doesn't take the lead here, call this trip off right now. How else will it be known that you're with me in this, with me and your people? Are you traveling with us or not? How else will we know that we're special, I and your people among all other people on this planet Earth? God said to Moses, All right, just as you say, this also I will do. For I know you well, and you are special to me. I know you by name. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verses 7 through 8. Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to his ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as your inheritance, as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Well, 2020 was supposed to be a year of fresh vision for Shoreline Free Methodist Church. We were not alone in using the phrase 2020 vision as we sought a year of refocus and fresh direction. And then, well, you know, our 2020 vision got blurrier by the week as we all sat at home wondering what church during what what church after covid was supposed to look like and so as 2021 begins we all yearn 
to get back to some sense of normalcy. We yearn to gather together. But I've also been thinking back over this strange year, and I've been reflecting on what I believe is most important in life. And so for the month of January, I'd like to share a few observations I've made, some thoughts I've been having about 2020, calling us to be about the priorities of God's kingdom. You know, Jesus spoke of fruit that will last. And I don't know about you, but I hope you join me in wanting to be about our lives, having our lives be about making fruit, growing fruit that will last. So as we look back, we look forward to invest in, and cultivate things for the long haul, not just how we can get through this time, not just how we can get back to normal in the coming year, but how we can invest in the things that are the priorities of God's heart. And I hope your heart and mine. And so hindsight is 2020. Reflections on the past year. And so to be playful, but to help you remember these things as I speak about them this month, a couple little phrases. There's this one. I mean, this is straight off the headlines of our news. Pfizer produces first COVID vaccine. Now that's, I don't want to talk about the vaccine. I don't want to talk about Pfizer. Pfizer, of course, starts with the letter P, if you don't know, P-F-I-Z-E-R. And so P Pfizer, <laughs> Pfizer, Pfizer produces first COVID vaccine. Or if you don't want to use that phrase, you could also say positive principles for creating value. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm giving you a little mnemonic device to remember the five messages that I'm going to give this month. Pfizer produces first COVID vaccine, PPFCV. Positive principles for creating value simply there to help you remember what I really want to talk about is that first P word this morning. And that word is simply this, presence. Not Christmas presence, not T-S, presence C-S, specifically God's presence. God's presence in our world, God's presence in our lives. Yahweh, ancient one. And yet, here with us today. In a year of social distancing, in a year of not being able to be present with each other, in a new year when we hope we can be, can I state the obvious? That isn't always that obvious. God has been present with each of us throughout 2020. You and I cannot be quarantined from God. I've thought a lot and, and I've prayed for those who have been alone all year. But as I've prayed, I've had to remind myself often that God is with them. And so often when I've prayed for people, all people, but especially people who have been alone during this year, I have prayed that they would be aware that God is with them. As Alan Trailer died last month, as Lauren Langland died this past week, I had to take stock myself to remind myself and take encouragement that they were not alone. Yes, there is a sadness this year, especially when, when people have passed away without their loved ones. And we've been praying for Mary this week, but they were not alone. And I have taken great hope in that. We've just finished celebrating the wonderful news of Emmanuel. The word became flesh. God came to us, 
that God might show us that God has always been presence. And this candle burns. And these elements are here this morning as we will finish our service taking communion. These are symbols of God's presence with us. This morning, let me just mention a few biblical texts to remind us of this great message of the, of the dwelling of God with the people of God. It begins, of course, in that garden. That wonderful narrative in Genesis 1 with this beautiful metaphor of God walking and talking with his creation. From the outset of our biblical narrative, we have a God that dwells and lives in relationship and presence with the people of God. Moses, you heard the scripture read this morning. Moses says to God, look, you tell me lead this people, but you don't tell me who you're going to send with me. And God says, my presence will go with you. And Moses says, well, if not, then let's stop right now. And Moses, as he is ending his life on earth and passing the reins of leadership to Joshua, he says to Joshua and to the people watching, the Lord goes before you. The Lord will be with you. God has been present God is present. God will be present. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Which leads the psalmist, many of our psalms, to remind us that God is with us. The 139th psalm says, Where can I flee from your presence? Just try to use your imagination. Where can you go where God will not be there? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your hand will hold me fast. Of course, we're all familiar with that line in the 23rd Psalm that says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, the valley of the shadow of death, even then I will not fear, for God is with me. Jesus told his disciples as he was about to leave them, he said, I won't leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Which leads him then in the next, the next section of, of narrative that we have in the upper room there with John and John, John, what we call John 15. In John 15, Jesus says, so remain in me. It's a, it's a beautiful piece of literature there because Jesus says, I'm going. It causes his disciples to say, well, we want to go with you. And Jesus says, you can't go with me. But he says, but I won't leave you. As orphans, I will come to you. I will be with you. And since I will be with you, and he is speaking of the Spirit, he says, you need to stay with me. I won't leave you. You don't leave me. You must remain in me. That's where he uses that phrase about fruit that will last. And we remain with Jesus by keeping in step with the Spirit of Jesus. Think back to this past year when I preached that whole series on the fruit of the Spirit. We produce fruit of the Spirit when we walk with the Spirit. And we can walk with the Spirit. We can keep in step with the Spirit because the Spirit is with us. God is present. Jesus, when he leaves this earth, climbs up on a mountain with his disciples. He says to them, now go. Go into all the world. Make disciples. But remember this. And lo, I will be with you always. Always 
I will be with you. God had been saying that from the beginning of the story. Moses says, you, you tell me to lead the people, but who are you going to send with me? God says, I'm going to send you with me. Jesus says, now go, go into all the world, and you're going to go with me. And that's how I want you to begin the year. As I reflect back on this past year and as we enter into 2021, perhaps you're thinking, that's it? This big buildup of a, of a series of reflecting on 2020 and all you have for us this morning is God is with us? Well, come back next week. There's more. There are still four more Sundays this week of things that I've been thinking about. But no, yes. Yes, I think this is hugely important. As I think back on a year that we wish wasn't, I think back and think, but, but we were not alone. We were certainly in the dark. We're still in the dark in many aspects, in many respects. But we are not alone. As I think back over the past year, there is so much to be discouraged about. Perhaps so many things to regret. Not only to wish we're different, but perhaps even wish we had done differently. And we can hope and yearn for things to be different this year. I know I do. But as we begin this year, as you, as you begin to think, if, if you've made some New Year's resolutions, I don't know. I, I haven't really made any yet. Um, there, is, there is a yearning, though, of what this year might, what change might come about, how things might be different, that, that we can get rid of all anything COVID-related, <laughs> that it will soon be something in the past. It doesn't change the fact that other things we will come our way. Other things will derail our plans, will not go according to the way that we, we wish and hope for. But regardless of COVID, regardless of political upheaval and Regardless of racial tensions and, regard, and even in the face of the injustice that we create ourselves, God is with us. God has been with us. God is still with us. God will always be with us. Many times this past year, the only thing that I could do for our church, for our church family. Outside of creating these services so that we could at least connect online each week. And there were other things that we did to try to keep us connected. But many times, the only thing I could do is pray. Which, a little spoiler here, that's going to lead to what I want to talk about next week. But as I prayed as I prayed for you, as I prayed for other people who are going through difficult times. The one thing that I could do is I, I could just release and surrender the lack of control that I had to change anything. I couldn't do anything about so many things in people's lives. But I could pray that God's presence would be made known that the people would experience the peace and the joy that comes from having the presence of God in their lives. I want to close each one of these messages this week with just a, a couple specific actions or responses that might help cultivate these ideas. Specifically this morning, one action will be to take communion together. And so in just a few minutes after a closing song, then I'll, I will come back and lead us in communion. But one of the reasons for communion is, is not only a mental remembrance to remember what Jesus has done for us. 
But throughout the history of the church, the sacrament has become a metaphor of God's presence. Now that's created all kinds of theological debate about the real presence of Christ, about where Christ is present here. And I'm going to avoid any of that debate here. But when we take the bread and we take the cup, we are reminded that Jesus is with us. And so one action to this first week of the year is to once again take this bread, take this cup to remember and not only again, not just cognitively remember, but remember means to reattach, to reconnect us to the ever-present Jesus in our midst. But here's another specific action I'd like to suggest and offer to you and to me. And that is simply a morning and evening, I'll call it a ritual, but that's too big of a word. Just a, just a morning and evening awareness of the presence of God. And by that I mean simply this. Find some way in the morning to just wake up and, and welcome the presence of God. To, to not just be the, the first thought, be what do I have to do or what am I going to have for breakfast? Or, I wonder if I got any new emails or check Facebook. But for the first thing in the, in the morning to be a, a good morning Lord, <laughs> acknowledge the presence of God. St. Patrick has a, a wonderful phrase in the, the breastplate of St. Patrick that says, I arise today, and then there are several lines, and it says, I arise today in the fullness of the Trinity. I arise today. We then get the, the prayer of St. Patrick out of, that, um, out of that breastplate. But I arise today. I just encourage you to, to rise in the morning with an awareness that God is with you. It's an awareness that we, we wake up to acknowledging the fact that God's been with us through the night. And so the other thing I would offer is, is just a simple acknowledgement that as we go to bed. Earlier this year when we talked about Benedictine practices, we talked about the Compline service, the, the daily prayer order that the, the monks and nuns do, but the closing prayer service of the day is Compline. When they then Offer the prayer before they go to sleep. Many of you, perhaps as children, remember that old prayer, now I lay me down to sleep. But I, I would just suggest, as you lay your head on your pillow at night, as I lay down to sleep, cultivate an awareness that God has been with you through the day and that God will be with you through the night. And then in the morning... <laughs> You can welcome him, as I've just suggested. Now, in between times, the another little bullet point I have here is the, the old phrase, practicing the presence of God, which we get from Brother Lawrence back in the 1600s. Lawrence offered this devotional thought of just practicing the presence of God throughout the day. To, to not just come into a prayer room to then meet with God, to, to go to church or but throughout the day, when, when you're in the kitchen, when you're going about your, your day, driving your car, when you're taking a shower, that you would be aware no matter where you are, no matter what you do, when you're with people, when you're alone, practice the presence of God. You don't need to do anything overly spiritual there. Granted, there are times, those are other messages for other times in terms of practicing contemplative prayer or praying specific petitions to God. But just every once in a while, I try to do this in my own life just to stop and realize, you know what? God is with me right here. This isn't in my notes here, but it happened just as I was getting set up here for this message. No, I pray that God would give me words to say. And I, I pray before I'm preparing. I pray at different times in my life. But here in this moment, I was just setting things up. I was getting the stand here. I was putting uh, the camera on the stand. 
And even in that moment, as I was thinking about all the details that needed to happen, I stopped. And there was just a moment where I thought, God is with me in this moment right here. I don't have to just bow and say, dear God, help me with this message. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. I do do that. But this was just a moment where I thought, even when I'm coming and going and down the hall, God is with me. Couple other action steps to close with. I've, uh, I'm going to, to revisit in this coming year an idea that I wanted to start last year. In fact, the week before we closed down with COVID, a few of us gathered and walked the neighborhood. And perhaps you re remember, we were going to have five different neighborhood prayer walks and, and then things shut down and there's been some different ideas here and there. But I'll talk more about this next week. As I said, I want to talk about prayer next week. But for, for the moment right here this morning, just don't even think about it as a prayer walk. One of the things that I want to foster with in a neighborhood prayer walk is, a, is cultivating an awareness that, that God is present in our neighborhood. It, the neighborhood prayer walk is not so that I can bring the presence of God to our neighbors. The fact is, is that God is as present with the people in our community as he is with you or with me. I perhaps need to open up my eyes and my heart and cultivate an awareness to where is God present? What is God doing? If there is nowhere that we can go that is outside of God's presence, then whenever, wherever we go, we could be watching for and looking for what is God doing here? What is God doing there? Lastly, now this is a could be an infinite list of suggestions, but lastly, I want to I want to mention what is actually a non-action. The, these other things were action steps, things we can do in the morning, in the evening, throughout the day. Here is a non-action step in cultivating the presence of God. And that is kind of like I just suggested. We don't bring God's presence to the world or to others. And so my, my non-action suggestion here is, is to cultivate an awareness that God is working in the lives of other people. We don't have to worry about how we can bring God to situations. Sometimes, sometimes there are things for us to do, don't get me wrong. But sometimes, sometimes we're thinking too much of ourselves when what I need to do is to perhaps get in the back seat and watch what God is doing. An, an illustration of this that came to me years ago was just even as a pastor, going to visit someone in a hospital, or and this has been even more aware to me this year, when, when I can't go to the hospital, when perhaps I'm just going to call someone, the, the two phone calls that I had with Lauren while he was in the hospital last week. I, I can get all worried about what I should say, what I need to say. I can also have a lot of regret that I didn't get to have a third and final phone call with Lauren in the hospital. Or I can rest in the wonder that God is with that person. And so, as I mentioned, this is something that came to me years ago. I have tried to cultivate this. That when, when I go to a hospital, even when I am perhaps in the elevator going up to see them in their room, there is a reminder to me that I'm not doing anything special and extraordinary here. I am not coming in to make the situation better. I'm simply being obedient and caring and compassionate. And when I walk into a room with someone there, I then cultivate an awareness in my own life that God is already there. I, I, I offer that to you in situations in your own life where perhaps you're, you're worried about what you should do, what you should do as a Christian, or what you should do to help. 
and this is this, this non-action I'm suggesting this week, is in cultivating an awareness of the presence of God. Know that God is already everywhere. We don't need to bring God anywhere in the world, into any situation, into anyone's life. God is there. How can we help foster an awareness of that, an acknowledgement of that? As I mentioned, we'll close with communion. We'll close with an awareness that as the candle burns brightly here, we, we lit this on, can, on Christmas Eve to offer to us the wonder that God is with us, Emmanuel. And God is with us as we gather together, even though we're not doing it in person, in communion. We commune with each other and with God in this, in this great mystery. And so if you've not done so already, if you can find some bread or juice or something to, to take the place of the, of the elements in communion, I will come back to lead us in communion after Aaron sings. After Aaron sings from the book of Hebrews about hope as an anchor, you know, we have this hope. We have this hope that God is with us as an anchor for our souls. And it is what gives us the ability to trust an unchanging one, the one who was, is, and is to come, you will not let us go. You will stand unshakable. You will always be there. You will always be with us. This is our hope. This is our hope. May you take encouragement and gain strength in knowing that God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. Regardless of what plans then you make for the year, know that there's nowhere you can go, there is nothing you can do that will be outside of the realm of the presence of God. Amen.
join with me in prayer. We do not come to this your table, O merciful Lord, with self-confidence and pride, trusting in our own righteousness, but we trust in your great and many mercies. We are not worthy to gather the crumbs from under your table, but you, O Lord, are unchanging in your mercy, and your nature is love. Grant us, therefore, God of mercy, God of grace, so to eat at this your table, that we may receive, in spirit and in truth, the body of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and the merits of his shed blood, so that we may live and grow in his likeness, and being washed and cleansed through his most precious blood, we may evermore live in him and he in us. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat this, for this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and he gave it out to all of them and said, drink this, every one of you, for this is now a new covenant, a covenant poured out in my own blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. as Saskia and Dean and Jesse lead us in this song, reminding us that the light of the world has come to bring light to our darkness and offered himself for us. Let us worship him with all our hearts and let us take comfort when these elements are actually taken into our very bodies. May that remind us that God is always with us. So take, feast upon this in your heart with thanksgiving and know that the Lord will never leave you, never forsake you. Amen.